let's do a little segment I like to call a walkie talkie. Now, of course, I was at the Deer Creek Go for 50 last night, 50,000 to win, and I was standing in turn three on the final lap, actually on a 10 foot gopher hill, I guess you would call it. And uh, I filmed the slider. I was pulling for Bobby Pierce to pull that slider off. I filmed it all the way to the flag stand from my perspective. And I thought Bobby Pierce won the race because that was the show. Now, as I start to walk towards victory lane, I hear timing and scoring and we have to review this finish. And first of all, let me just say that it is very difficult to be an official, especially in one of these situations where there's a lot of things that have occurred, a lot of things that have happened, and now you have to make a decision on a $50,000 to win event. Now what's very funny about this scenario is that all the pictures that we can see from the finish of last night's race show slightly before, slightly after, and at the flag stand, the number one of Hudson O'Neill and the Rocket One taking home the victory. Now some people are leaning on the whole we use timing and scoring excuse, which is what the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series is basically their only excuse based on the uh, photographic, videographic evidence that everyone is seeing right now. It's the timing and scoring that determined that victory and we have seen this before and I went up to Mark Richards after the race and I said so what do you think about this and he showed me the pictures of the one car ahead of it and he said what do you think Chaz and I said well in my book I've always went off the start finish line no matter where their little loopy's at and then I thought about it for a second I said so are you gonna say anything do you want to talk about it no Chaz I don't want to argue and and uh there was some conversations had that alluded to if it was anybody but the one car and how the show won the race. And even I made that claim earlier. The show won the race once I saw the results that it actually came across. And obviously the Rocket One car had its issues earlier in the week with multiple drivers. There is somewhat of a uh, oligarchy style labeling for the Rocket One car and Mark Richards. Some people don't know what oligarchy is. It's a very powerful entity within a political system that somewhat dictates and uh, produces results within the political system based on its power and overall seeing and being within the system that is at hand. So there is somewhat of a target on the back of the one car at this scenario in this situation. But Mark Richards kept alluding to I don't want to argue I just want to get to the next race because they I mean arguably the people there should be a little bit upset because it didn't go by the photo before the line after the line at the line it went by this magical timing and scoring loop that racetracks can't redig a ditch and line up with their actual start finish line box now the biggest problem with everybody saying timing and scoring is there was a situation earlier in the year that I paid attention to, covered, and discussed with a former series official about opening a can of worms on a reverse decision at the Golden Isle Speedway. And here's a clip of the video I'm talking about. It was a heat race between Tyler Bruning and Brandon Shepard. Funny how I just mentioned oligarchy. Of course, Brandon Shepard at this point of the year had just proclaimed being a World of Outlaw driver, and Tyler Bruning had just proclaimed being a Lucas Oil driver for the year. So the politics are very interesting on how all this all works out. But timing and scoring had Brandon Shepard beating Tyler Bruning for the final transfer spot at that racetrack at that race to make it into the A-Main event. And the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series reversed that call based on the visual result that everyone, and even my, me at that time, agreed with of the 16 car beating the B5 to the line. And that call to just make it into the A main was based on the visuals of a car beating another car to the start finish line checkered flag box. And this is the problem, you gotta call it one way or another all the time. 
some people we, we saw this at a, a track called Hendry County they go off the score uh, scoring loop every lap but when it comes to that final checkered flag finish they go off the visuals to the actual checkered flag now that has not always happened there's been a lot of people go by the scoring loop even in that video I alluded to the Donnie shot Shane Stewart race which was visually off obviously there I believe there was the Brandon Shepard Ricky Thornton jr. finish at Davenport that was visibly off from where that guy was waving that checkered flag But the can of worms was open to start the year when the Lucas Oil late model dirt series Reversed the timing and scoring result and gave it to Tyler Bruning based on the visuals and based on what we saw last night That should have been the same call as well Especially when fifty thousand dollars are on the line, but that's the politics that Shepard no longer with Lucas Oil, Tyler Bruning with Lucas Oil now. That's the Rocket One car being the evil guy all weekend. Fans upset with how Huddy raced Ricky Thornton and this guy and that guy and the politics. And Mark Richards is a big battle guy. I got the Austin Fitzpatrick story of the straight axle. I asked around about why that straight axle was uh, removed or, or rules were written to take that straight axle out. I felt so bad for Austin Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick and his hard work and everyone I asked in some very high playing positions blame Mark Richards and I'm starting to think that Mark Richards is slowly becoming the scapegoat for the late model industry when anything goes bad or this changes or that changes I'm starting to think that because what was called last night was inconsistent and not fair all for the sake of the show. I guess you gotta just turn the cheek, as they all say. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, this is why it is so important to stay consistent with the calls and decisions that you are going to make, or the can of worms will open and you will have worms splattered all out over the concrete, which it seems like we do right now. And it would be a real bad position to be swale. I mean, with me and a couple people even talked about that. That's probably the worst job you could have in motorsports. Uh, there's a lot of pressure, a lot of situations like this that get put onto your shoulders and you get the blame for. I don't know. Maybe this is a situation to where now uh, will we make sure that there are rules written because there isn't any written verbatim. Now we have to potentially think of putting it in black and white final lap for the win are we going off photos to the checker flags are we going off scoring loops only i know the series official who said this opened a can of worms said that he always explained to the drivers where the scoring loop was located on the track so that everybody knew what point of the racetrack to race to but why can't the damn tracks dig a ditch up and put the right scoring loop in i still don't understand that but regardless that's what I think, ladies and gentlemen. Leave a comment below. What do you think of this whole entire scenario? Uh, like the video, share the video, and as always, be sure to subscribe. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, maybe see you at Dubuque. We'll see you at Attica and Eldora starting Tuesday throughout the next week. Until next time. This is how we ride. This is how we do.